So, have you ever wondered what the situation it is in our school? I have. I chose to do it on the socioeconomic divide or achievement gap within our school. Um, I think our class is a pretty big example. There's only a handful of people and there's a bunch more other regular general education classes stuck with kids. Um, so we all have kind of experience and that's what I just like to talk about, exactly this problem. Um, the achievement gap, it's what's going on it with it exactly, which includes poverty, inadequate funding, and what is being done or has tried to be done. So John Schulzer, his article states, the achievement gap is the difference in social class and how it starts to damage the path leading to success in the realm of education, and thus creating the achievement gap. And that's very true. Um, you will see that countless times that um, there is significance in with you and your classmates. It is not about being like putting yourself on a pedestal. It's about being realistic, that there is definitely has been students who aren't as capable as you or show or don't show as many capabilities. And it's not entirely their fault. Whose fault is it? It's hard to put point fingers, but researchers Blair, Clancy, and Seibel found and from their study closing the achievement gap through uh, neurocognitive and neurodoctrine function that poverty related gaps in achievement are accompanied by poverty related differences in brain structure and functions of early learning. Um, essentially saying that the limited amount of resources you have does, in, does and will in fact impact your way to uh, learn early on. I feel like one of the biggest differences, if anybody has younger siblings, you will see that your younger siblings don't do what you did in elementary school. The education is very different. If anybody remembers phonics, that's not a thing anymore. Those little gray sheets, it's not a thing or at least I haven't seen it. Um, or it, it was a very big transition from what it was to what it is now. Um, what else can contribute? Inadequate funding. Hanny Morgan in her story, in her report, uh, poverty-stricken schools, what we can learn from them and the rest of the world, and socially uh, schools in economically disadvantaged areas in the US, she explains the countless issues which include poor working conditions, underpaid and overworked teachers. And this contributes to those to things I alluded earlier, the overstuffed classrooms, how full they are, teachers are being expected to do more with less. And they're constant, this is a constant cycle that, um, that some states or overall as a nation, we can't get under control. We constantly see it. And like I alluded earlier, our class is a little bit smaller. We had to fill up this class in order to have the class. Other classes aren't the same. They're overpacked. What is being done? What has tried to be done? Has anybody ever, if anybody ever watched the news, um, or it was pretty big during Obama's presidency uh, because they got gained more traction, but the No Child Left Behind Act uh, in its success. Uh, Camille, Camille Mayers did an in-depth study no child, be, no child Left Behind Act and points out the lack of efficiency. She claims that it did more harm than it did good. And this is very true. Um, there was people being pushed along who definitely shouldn't have been pushed along. You are worsening the problem than other, other than fixing it. By pushing these kids along, you run into the same kind of pattern here if, any, if anybody takes note of. I'm constantly talking about the same things because it's true. It's a consistent pattern across the board that we will continue to face until something is actually being done regarding the issue for long term because this builds up it's generational we aren't going to be we aren't going to be the only generation affected by this if it's not solved they would be consistently like i like i said our younger siblings would constantly face the same thing whether it's inadequate resources to actually obtain the material or something else of that matter uh, solutions is actually a little bit um, ironic or hypocritical because you would, instead of catering to the needs of the whole populace, you would need to cater to the needs of the smaller population. So the people who are actually underfunded and not receiving the proper resources by providing better education and actually taking budgeting a lot more seriously when regarding the education system, as in, which includes proper talent training and uh, so that they can therefore teach the material they're supposed to be teaching. This will help turn the tide against the issue and cr 
uh, help solve this long-term issue we've had. Which some people have pointed out to, and like Eric Haniusek and his uh, report, the achievement gap fails to close. Half a century of testing shows persistent divide between have and have nots. He urges America, uh, he explains how I believe that America is always urging for people to act, for teachers or talent to do more. And, and so this creates that cycle, but by actually taking the time and providing the funding, providing the training, the problem can be alleviated, if not fixed long term. So I spoke today about the socioeconomic divide and the achievement gap. I mean, I described the inadequate funding, the poverty, what it is, what is or has been done. And I just like to that, just kind of retaining people's minds as you go forward into your careers. I don't ask people to be problem solvers, but I ask them to keep in thought. Then that's kind of like the situation that we've been placed in. Because the other school in South Haven, you can tell. And the other area in South Haven, you can tell. Thank you.